Hi everyone, I am very excited to introduce to you the newest member of the Conservative team, the Member of Parliament for Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill, Leona Alislev. Leona, welcome to the Conservative Caucus, welcome to the Conservative team. Thank you so much for, for putting your faith in our party. Oh, well, thank you very much for welcoming me so incredibly. It's been fantastic. Well, we're so thrilled to have you. Uh, I'd like you to talk maybe a little bit about yourself, your background. Uh, I'll, Cole's notes, a very distinguished career in the military, captain in the Air Force. I understand mm -hmm. that some of your responsibility was around procurement, logistics, that type of thing? Yes, actually I spent a fair amount of time in a defense procurement. I was on a base where I looked after sort of supply chain and, and did some stuff in uh, finance and uh, food services and stuff like that, but then I went to National Defense Headquarters where I worked on uh, equipment program management for the F-18, the wow. Aurora, the Herc, the Griffin helicopter, and, uh, and wow. contracting for that kind of stuff. Very distinguished career. Thank you for your service oh, well, in the military. You. Thank you. Uh, now, you had a question and question period today on the replacement of the CF-18s. Were you to still be in the armed forces and you were in that position and you got the phone call saying, good news, we're getting new jets. And then you found out that they're actually 40-year-old Australian cast-offs. What would your reaction be? There's no polite way to put this. It would be really discouraging. I mean, the Australians bought the same airplanes that we have, but before us even. So to give us additional capability by buying airplanes that are older than the ones that we already have doesn't make you feel like you're leading edge and doesn't make you feel like you're at the same level able to contribute with your allies uh, around the world. Well, we could not agree more. Uh, after the military, you had some private sector experience, IBM and Bombardier. Yep. Is that right? Yep. So at IBM, I was actually a management consultant, and I went around the world uh, put in implementing large systems implementation, so big computer systems and mm -hmm. things like Phoenix, not on the Phoenix, but systems like that. And then I was at Bombardier Aerospace where I designed and implemented the assembly line to build the Global 5000, 6000 and the Global 7000, 8000 airplane. So uh, as you can tell, a very distinguished background, brings a lot of expertise uh, to Parliament. Now, a lot of people are talking about what is uh, involved in making a decision of this magnitude. And we all come to this chamber, we all get elected under party banners. And, uh, you know, some questions are being asked. You know, what led into this decision? How difficult was it? What were some of the things along the way? Uh, so do you want to speak to that? I, I, you know, obviously this was not something you did likely, but I'd just love to give you an opportunity just to maybe walk some, some of the people walking through what goes into a, a choice like that. Well, I think it's obviously a very difficult decision, and it certainly was, and not one, as you said, that I took lightly. But when I joined the military and became an officer, I swore an oath to serve and defend this country. And so everything I've done since then, I always check in with myself on a regular basis to say, am I still doing what it takes to serve and defend the country? And then when I became a member of parliament, it was my name on that ballot, and so therefore, I'm the one held responsible for how I represent my constituents and my country. And so over the last three years, some of the government actions and policy changes combined with where Canada is and where the world is, I just came to a culmination of things that said, in order for me to do what the constituents are asking of me and what I know the country needs, I'm going to need to make a change. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very grateful to you and the Conservatives because we had a very long conversation and I shared all of those policy and, and future vision type challenges that my constituents were telling me that we needed to do. And you said, yes, Absolutely. I would have a home here in the Conservative Party. Absolutely, well, uh, you're so right. And uh, there's lots of different reasons why people choose to uh, either vote for or support uh, a political party. To me, it's all about the most amount of common ground. You know, yes. you, you, we, we're yeah. gonna have some disagreements on various things. You had your first caucus meeting uh, yeah. th this week. Obviously, you can tell that uh, we have some, some points of, of debate uh, uh, along issues, but the, the, where people come together is where they've got the most common ground for fundamental shared values and principles for, for the direction of the country. Exactly, but the exciting thing is that I'm allowed to have a difference of opinion. And you've made me feel valued 
even in that condition. Well, we sure do appreciate that. And what our message to uh, Canadians, especially those who voted Liberal in the last election, is uh, you are welcome in the Conservative Party uh, if you feel that this country is on the wrong track, if you think taxes are too high, if you think Canada is not keeping pace with what's going on in the world. There are a lot of dangerous trends that we see uh, with uh, traditional partnerships and, and alliances under under intense amounts of pressure. And uh, if you believe that in 2019 we need to chart a new course, a stronger course of action to defend Canada and our interests, then like Leona, you'll have a home in the Conservative Party.